Hello. Okay, so it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. Um, this was mostly because I had a big job at the end of summer last year, which took me basically to Christmas, um, uh, which was really good fun. And I've just taken some time off, and it's just taken me a little while to get back into it. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to try and start doing videos again. Hello. Um, I thought I'd start this one off with a kind of walkthrough on how I make these key rings. As some of you may know I've got an Etsy shop uh, where I sell kind of laps, weapons-ish, and key rings. Uh, it, there will be more added to it over time as I get more time to make things. Um, but key rings are fairly straightforward for me to make. Um, and I've got a 3D printer, so what I do is I just 3D print them and then um, mold them and cold cast them. And I think cold cast key rings are pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, this is just a kind of quick video on how I make my cold cast key rings. Cheers. So I started uh, my channel with a Judge Dredd video, so I thought maybe may as well get back into it with uh, Judge Dredd. Uh, the design in the 90s film is fantastic, and there's an ABC droid, ABC warrior droid, which I have always loved. So I thought I'd make that into a keyring. Uh, okay, so I'm jumping onto cults, and I'm looking for the ABC droid. I did see it at the time, and here it is. This is what I'm going to use. So this design is from Serbats. It's also available on Fingerverse. So this is Creative Commons and by attribution. So as long as I'm giving the right credit, I can use this model and sell it. Download it from Colts. I don't know, some of you know that I go on about MeshMix all the time. It's an amazing free program, very powerful tool for manipulating, editing, sculpting. First thing I need to do is get rid of this hole in the jaw. I can keep the mouth open, but I just can't have a hole running through my model. Uh, because when I make a mold, that's going to make demolding very difficult. So the first thing I'm doing is adding a rectangle and filling in the gap. You just need to get it roughly in place, then combine the two shapes, the STL of the head and the new object. Once you've combined them, then you want to solidify the, the object. Uh, I found that some STL files that people make can be quite gappy and bitty. Uh, the way that they've added and combined shapes, the way that they've added meshes on the uh, Blender or whatever program they end up using to, to make the design. So anyway, make it solid, you bump up the bars. Again, this isn't a mesh mixer tutorial, but I would definitely recommend checking out some of the tutorials I have in the description for more information on how to use mesh mixer. Key thing is you want to fill any big holes and then you want to go through with the sculpt tool and kind of smooth everything over in these kind of corners and overhangs just because when you're molding, this is going to become a potential air pocket or a potential error when you're when you're demolding the uh, resin from the mold later. Cool. So now I'm happy with that. Um, I can export this into 3D Builder uh, to add my funnel and any kind of tubes that I need to add for the design. So the first design I did was uh, to have the tube coming in from underneath. Uh, this is a kind of area that I could then cut back with a saw. So this is going to be based on my funnel. So when I make the silicon mold, there's a hole. Uh, for me to pour the resin into in order to make this kind of shape. Uh, you've got to kind of think backwards when making a mold. So there's lower points are going to become the higher points and they all need air vents in order for the air to escape when you're filling the silicon with resin. Anyway, this design failed. I actually settled on a newer design that I've done, uh, which is to make the funnel and the kind of ring hoop at the top of this key ring uh, one piece so that you've just got one area that you then cut down and you don't have any kind of areas that don't have that really nice cold cast finish. Try and reduce those areas as much as possible. It's better just to make this kind of loop at the top for the key ring. Uh, also the funnel. Pretty straightforward rectangle with a cone on top of it. I then adjust the heads at an angle where I think there's going to be less bubbles forming. This is going to be unique to each of your models and it's a process that I think you're going to have to get used to. You get a good feel for it as you, as you make more. I'm tilting it forward because I think this is going to reduce the amount of air bubbles so that everything kind of flows to that uh, funnel area. And then I'm going to flip the piece and settle it down so that it's flat for when I'm printing. So this is how it's going to be in the cup as I pull the silicon onto it. So you want to make sure those, those areas are not catching any of the air bubbles that we talked about. It's not a one for all kind of situation, so that's going to be unique to each of these key rings. And it's going to have to be something that you figure out, I'm afraid. Then I'm opening it up in my slicer. This time I'm using a lychee. It's good for some things, not great for other things. It's very good at auto supports, which I'm sure some of you hate, but 
I'm not going to tell you how to use Lightyear or how to use a slicing program. In this video, I'm just going to do a quick run through of how I do it. So add the supports and orient the piece the best way that would suit your printer. Uh, it's not so, again, it's not a kind of one size fits all process. Your printer is going to be unique to your space and your resin is going to affect it. The temperature of the room is going to affect it. There's so many things and so many variables in printing that this is not a print tutorial. Just essentially support it how you like and get it through the slicer. Cool. So now we're ready to print. Uh, this is me actually trying to print the first design that I did with the spout in the middle. As you can see, this failed, which was a shame, but I think this is due to the fact that I didn't make it a solid object, which meant that there was an area of weakness during the printing and uh, that. anyway, it failed. And this is just to give you an idea of how slow printing can be sometimes. Okay, the print itself takes hours and the cleaning process is very tedious in between if there's a failure. After leveling the bed and resetting the machine, I was good to go with my new design, which was the, the kind of funnel on top on that loop. And this worked fine. It comes straight off the bed. I'm also using the AnyCubit Wash and Cure system. Again, it's fantastically easy. Just chuck it in there with the isopropyl alcohol, turn it on, and it kind of just spins, spins for like six minutes. And then, yeah, then that's kind of rinsed off all the kind of uncured resin. I've never had trouble with uh, with my su supports, really, which has been which has been amazing. Um, as you can see, it came off really easily. Cool. So you can see where some of the supports met the model. Um, there's some imperfections there. What I'd like to do now is run it under the UV light so that it cures any of those areas and hardens the model a little bit. And then I go in with my file and just file down those kind of slight imperfections left by the supports. Uh, it's a bit of a tedious process, but it's definitely worth doing. Using a bit of isopropyl alcohol there to kind of we'll rinse off any of that resin dust. Probably should wear gloves. Cool. Um, I actually added a clear coat to the key ring. Uh, this helps smooth out any of those kind of print lines or any print imperfections, any of those support lines as well, it just reduces them down. Measure out your silicon. And I'm simply gluing, hot gluing this key ring with funnel to the bottom of a cup. Make sure there's a nice amount of area around it. Add the add part B to your silicon, very carefully stirring at first, and then you want to just basically stir this beyond. You just want to make sure you really stir this up so that you're getting every of that. All those white parts needs to become pink, basically. Scrape the bottom, scrape the sides, keep stirring. Stir, stir twice as long as you think you need to. Then I am popping it in the vacuum. This helps remove the air bubbles from the silicon so that when you pour the mold, you haven't got kind of lots of air in that silicon. Um, definitely recommend doing this if you're doing anything in resin. Um, it's, it's not absolutely essential, um, but it definitely, definitely has helped me out with the, some of the imperfections that can come from silicon mold making and air bubbles forming. Then you want to pour it more carefully than this around the key ring. You want to try not to get too much on the key ring itself. You want to try and fill it from the sides and let it kind of let the silicon seep around the, the model. And then, yeah, that's it. Then you have to wait 24 hours for it to dry, basically. Let's go do something else. So the next day, it was uh, nice and set. So all you have to do now is make a little incision into the side of the cup, peel off the cup, chuck that away. And um, yeah, then what I need to do is cut slices either side of this funnel uh, to allow me to remove the model from the mold. So you want to try and, you don't want to cut the whole thing in half um, and you want to just kind of work your way down. Again, this is something that you're just going to have to get a feel for for your, the individual model and it's going to be unique. You want to try and zigzag the line so that when you push it, push it back together again, it makes quite a nice seal. If it's just a straight line, this sometimes can slide a lot easier than if it's a zigzag. That's what I believe anyway. So cut both sides and then very carefully wiggle the piece until you feel it's nice and free from the silicon. You obviously don't want to tear that silicon, so just be careful. And then, yeah, the piece should come out nicely. And that's, um, and that's yeah, that's, that's good to go. Let's have a go with the old uh, cold cast process. So that's my silicon mold done. Now I can make a load of key rings. So cold casting. So I'm using Polycraft's copper powder. It's from MB Fiberglass. Um, I 
love the shine this powder gives. This one's going to be in copper. And what you want to do is you want to put a little bit in the mold and give it a good shake. This basically sticks to the inside of that mold and you have a nice thin layer of metal powder. So tap out any of the excess into, a, into the cup that you're using to make the resin. And then you want to add a little bit more metal powder to that resin as well. So the resin that I'm using is polyurethane two part mix. Um, it's black, which apparently helps the cold cast process stand out more. You haven't got long to work with this stuff, so you want to get the lid on quickly and give it a good stir. Try and make sure that you're stirring all that powder deeply into it. I should have put a rubber band around this silicon mold before, but anyway, here it goes. And pour a bit in, give it a little whirl around so that you're getting any of those kind of areas that might cause air bubbles. And then pour the rest in and wait. Cool, after about 20 minutes to half an hour, um, my resin is actually good to demold. Carefully pull the cast out of the mold and there, as you can see, there's a nice layer of copper powder over the whole thing. And all I've got to do is trim off the top of that funnel from the loop, dremel a curve to that loop so it's a nice kind of soft loop for the top of the key ring and drill through it. And there we go ready to be polished. I'm going to use a bench polisher, uh, but you don't have to use a bench polisher. You can use um, iron wool. It's pretty good for this. Just give it a little rub on iron wool or even kind of other metal polishing processes. Essentially, it's, it behaves much like any metal. After polishing on the wheel, it comes out nice and shiny. And then I just go off with a cloth, give it a good rub in some of these exposed areas and pop the loop on and there we go that's a key ring ready to go um i really like how this has come out however i do want it to be a bit more kind of raggedy i like how this oxide paint from citadel works with coppers and metals uh, makes it look nice and oxidized anyway slap a load of that over these areas that have got a bit of detail in them and then wipe off the excess with a paper towel and yeah and then that just adds a nice bit of kind of weathering to this this piece, I think the ABC droids are famously quite like antique in the in the Dread universe. They don't use them anymore because they're pretty dangerous. Um, and yeah, it adds a nice kind of extra element to this uh, to this design. And that's basically it.